my name is Wendy, I'm Bree's mom, and I want to show you, want to talk about brown rice. Um, and all of the things I talk about are based on my daughter's original consultation uh, in macrobiotics many years ago, and what I learned to build up her health, because she was only given five years to live. Um, and now she's 34 and a half, so uh, I think it's been successful. <laughs> Uh, what we start with is always brown, organic brown rice, um, and the short grain brown rice. See, this is what it looks like, short grain brown rice. Uh, it's the hardiest, and uh, rice like this is uh, it's really good for the nervous system. Rice, well, most of the, most of the world's main uh, food is rice, except it's white rice where everything, all the good nutrients are bleached out of it. So you want organic, short grain brown rice for this particular situation, which uh, for me was a healing situation with my daughter. I am qualified in macrobiotics. Brie and I did that together, but um, mainly I'm coming from mom, okay? Mom cooking for her sick child of any disease, actually. So. Um, the first thing I want to show you is how to make something called brown rice cream. Uh, brown rice cream is for anybody who has, who's sick, but also with anybody having trouble swallowing, having trouble digesting. Um, so it's, um, uh, you know, for me, raise sick, make brown rice cream because there's a chance you won't want to eat anything else. So I do have the brown rice cream cooked because it takes two hours to cook. But the first ingredient in it is I have a cup of brown, organic brown rice. I've rinsed it out. This will go in a dry, this is a cast iron pan. I've had this for about 40 years. Uh, it's well worth the money when a pan lasts you that long. Um, either cast iron or stainless steel, those are the two I cook in. So this has been rinsed out, and I'm putting it in it. There's nothing in here, just the water from the brown rice, okay? And um, you always wash your rice out first. I have this neat little gadget that a friend gave me so that when I put the rice in here and rinse it with water, uh, about three times when I pour the water out, the grain stays in, so that's nice. But if you don't have something like that, this works just as well when you pour out, have like this so you catch any rice that's coming out and put it back in and rinse it again. So now I'm just going to dry roast this rice in the pan. It'll get to be a very nice, nutty smell. Unfortunately, you can't smell this. And um, just until it's like a golden brown. And I'm stirring, as you can tell, I'm stirring counterclockwise. Um, whatever, I, <laughs> you might think I'm just funny with this, but uh, macrobiotics uh, has all kinds of principles. And uh, so I, for the energy, for putting in good energy, and I want to put in all the good energy I can. Just that you're cooking, mom's cooking for your child. That love that's inside of you, as far as I'm concerned, is going into your food, which is, that's what you want. You know, that, that love, not somebody working at a fast food uh, restaurant <laughs> uh, that, you know, is just blowing up at their partner that morning, uh, is angry, resentful, hates their job. You know, um, mom, when mom's cooking for her children, that love is always in there, even if mom is not 100%. And uh, I don't think there's any love stronger in the whole world but mom's love. So I dry roast this. Then what I'm going to do is, these are cast iron too, a nice heavy pot uh, with a heavy lid. I'm going to put 10 cups of water and please, good water. I have well water here, uh, but good if you don't have a good water source and there's fluoride and a whole bunch of things put in your water, a water filter would be a good idea. I had one for years when I didn't have a well. Um, 
Then you put in, um, let's say, a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. Sea salt, please. Because table salt has additives you don't want. Sea salt has trace minerals that you do want. So a good sea salt, and um, hmm, this is smelling better and better. So what we have here is one cup of organic brown rice, 10 cups of water, a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. When this is dry roasted, it will go in the pot with the 10 cups of water and the salt, bring it to a boil, then put it on a simmer, Bree's commenting, and then put it, um, bring it to a boil, then put the lid on, put it down to simmer for two hours. You don't have to deal with it. You don't, don't stir it, don't, just leave it alone. And, um, <laughs> there. Now I'm gonna put this aside for later because I don't uh, need it right now. Here we go. There. So now what I have, this is called a Foley mill. This little gadget on top of the bowl. It sits really nicely, hooks on the bowl really nicely. Now I use this, but you can use cheesecloth. When this is made and finished, it's very watery and creamy. Very watery and creamy. And I will put it in the Foley mill. But you can use cheesecloth. A Foley mill is F-O-L-E-Y mill. Okay. So I put it in here. And then I grind it up. It just grinds up quite beautifully. I'll do soups like this too. And you're, you're going to get a very watery, nutritious liquid here. And that is the brown rice cream for, that's what I make when my daughter's sick. Um, then what uh, I will do with it is I might put a couple of sheets of nori on top. Let's see uh, here. I'm going to, I haven't done this because, of course, time constraints, this would be a little thicker. But I would probably, it's just like water, thick water, once I have it all done. Then I would put a couple of sheets of nori on top. Now, I'll tell you about nori and maybe some parsley. So, nori is a sea, I call it a sea vegetable, vegetables that are in the sea. Some of the most unrecognized foods in our part of the world, the Asians are very aware of the benefits of this. This is what you find around sushi. This is high, this is nori, N-O-R-I. Um, nori is high in minerals. Sea vegetables are where you get your minerals. Now, I'll just show you one thing here. What I do is I toast. The nori will be in the package like that. I toast the less shiny side, the inside. Okay, this is very shiny, the inside. And one day maybe I'll show you how to make vegetable uh, uh, sushi. And I toast this very quickly on my burner. Um, gas stove, if you have it, you know every chef on TV, they all cook with gas. So uh, you, it's the best controllable, that's what you want. So I toasted the nori. I can usually see by looking through it, it cha changes almost a brown color. And then I just cut it up with a piece of scissors. Okay, and that's, that's the nori here. Nori, a cup of nori has more fiber no, sorry, wrong. Uh, a sheet of nori, a sheet of nori like this, has more fiber in it than one cup of raw spinach. And also, a sheet like this has a more of the omegas, the good brain food, than a cup of avocado. Calcium. I mean, this is, you know, so this adds a lot when you just sprinkle it on the top of your rice. You know, you can literally sprinkle it up. Everybody, Bree loves it, the dogs love it. If my dog was here right now, he'd be after eating this, okay? And he gets it every day too. So, 
that is the brown rice cream. Now, what I want to talk about, I'm just going to put that rice on the side, is just cooking rice, another heavy pot. I put rice is usually uh, two cups of water to two cups of rice. Two and two, okay. And um, I've made this ahead of time also because it takes 50 minutes to cook. So I have a rice paddle and I'll stir up my rice. Basically, I want to show you what I can do with this. There, organic brown rice. And you know, there are t I am barely scratching the surface with rice here. I just want to give something for other parents who want to get started, you know, or want to somehow add this for their children. Um, there's, uh, in summertime, there's basmati rice, a long grain rice. Um, I use a black forbidden rice if I'm having a party or something. Uh, pink rice. I mean, and the combinations are endless, endless. So what I've got here is, uh, bring it to the boil. I've got about a pot with maybe a couple of inches of water in it. And I've got rice cooked. So now I want to show you a couple of ways to use this. First of all, it's good just like that. Then you want to up, because rice, <laughs> rice has fiber, it has minerals, it has this rice, <laughs> B vitamins, it has selenium. Selenium, you don't need much of it, but it's known as an anti-cancer mineral. It's really important. So, um, you know, and, and the funny thing was, I came to this having to read materials on healing cancer, healing diabetes, healing other things. Um, but, you know, the body is the body, no matter what the disease is. It just manifests in different people in different ways. So, um, so what I'm going to do with this, bring it up to the boil, and I have... This is going to be rice. Some of this rice is going to be uh, cooked with purple top turnips and Napa cabbage. So as soon as this comes to the boil, I have diced purple top turnips. This is a purple top turnip. This also is a turnip. Isn't that beautiful? So what you do is uh, wash all your vegetables. You can get a vegetable brush, wash them all well. You don't have to take off the skin. All I'm going to do is take off the, the rough looking parts. Okay, the rough looking parts here. And uh, then slice it through the center, like this. Like that, okay? In case you're only using half of it. And then just slice it through. Then I take half of this and I slice through again like this and I dice it up. Boom, boom, boom. Okay? And that's done. All right. Now, the Napa cabbage, one thing to know, this is a Napa cabbage. Please do not just start, everything has to be washed ahead of time. Don't just slice the top and use the top. You literally take the whole leaf off. Okay, the whole leaf is what you use. All right, so this is now boiling, so I'll put this in here. And that'll be there for a few minutes. And at the top. Now, in the meantime, I'll put this back in here and I'll use it for something later. Um, sea salt. I have two kinds here, Matsu and Boen, and you can get good uh, sea salt. You can either go to um, goldminenaturalfoods.com. First of all, your health, um, your food co-op should have good sea salt. There's, uh, <clears throat> oh, there's some wonderful salt, sea salts out there. And, um, or you can order it from the Kushi store, K-U-S-H-I, or you can order it from Goldmine Natural Foods and have it delivered to your door. So you can get it. 
compared to when I started over 30 years ago, I, I used to drive at once a week, drive four, two hours each way to pick up my food for the week. Now it's like, it's in my mind, it's so easy. The choices are amazing. So you just slice this through, and you know when greens are big like this, just curl them up, okay, and just slice it through. And this is like a good porridge, and you're getting vegetables in it. Keep your, keep your, uh, always curl your, your fingers under when you're cutting. Okay? Now, that's coming along nicely. So, um, and what I'll, I'm trying to, oh yeah, and the other thing I will do is uh, toast up some sesame seeds, which this could have just sesame, rice alone, or another way is to add sesame seeds that are, are dry roasted, which I'll do in a minute, add that to the top with a bit of nori and some parsley in a bowl on a plate with steamed greens, it's beautiful. Now I'm going to add the Napa cabbage to the pot. Okay, and then I'm going to let it cut, cook for a couple of minutes, and um, I will add uh, some of the cooked rice to that. So, and then I'll um, have a, that'll be another way of serving it. I'm trying to, in a very short period of time, show you how to have a couple of different ways to cook rice. That you could make a pot like this for your family and um, you know this could be uh, breakfast porridge and then the other one I'm going to do a very simple fried rice could be part of supper and um, you know you can you can make the rice you can cook your rice when you're watching TV at night and just heat it up the next morning it's not like you so and I put everything you know just just put it on a timer when the timer goes off, you know it's done. When you have rice like this, two cups of rice, two cups of water, and a quarter to a half teaspoon of salt, cooks for 15 minutes, you don't, once the cover's on, you don't bother it. You leave it alone, okay? It'll cook on its own, no stirring, nothing, until the end. Now this is cooking down nicely, so what I'll take is some of this rice, and put it right on top. Mmm, it smells. I think it smells good. <laughs> um, when I talk about energy and stuff, um, for whatever reason, you can uh, call me nutty or whatever, but um, there. So I took half of that rice and there we go turn it down a bit and just let that cook for a minute um when i first one of my first lessons many years ago with my macrobiotic teacher um we were cooking all day long she was cooking i was cooking with her that's how i was learning best way to learn and the first day, we just did our cooking and sat down to a wonderful meal at night. The second day, there happened to be construction going on at the house, outside the kitchen door. A lot of hammering, a lot of hammering. And, but we did our cooking just like that. And we ate that meal that night. And there was a difference. Okay, there was, um, and for whatever reason, it wasn't, the food wasn't as, didn't feel as peaceful because we were cooking with that, that noise all day long. So, um, you know, environment, surroundings, people, you know, you want a good energetic environment around <laughs> your family, don't you? Absolutely. <laughs> Bree is my manager. She keeps everything going here. She's my inspiration. She's everything. Absolutely. I wouldn't be doing any of this if it wasn't for my daughter. This is lovely. This is, is just lovely now. So, now I will mix it up. Everything's cooked very nicely. There. 
And I'm just going to turn this to low. And I'll show you. And I take this out and put it on this plate. Now, you've gotten three vegetables when you, when you see this plate at the end. There. And I'll come back to this later. I'll just put this over here. All right, so now what I'm going to do is dry roast some sesame seeds. sesame seeds somewhere here. Oh, here they are. <laughs> I have rinsed these first, all right? Nothing in the pan. Let me get everything out. Sesame seeds, amazing food. Um, they're very, very high in uh, calcium, also selenium. Um, which is, uh, uh, as I said, so you put, you have cooked rice with this, and you put dry roasted sesame seeds on top, and both uh, have good sources of selenium in them, uh, which is known as to, uh, at least the recent research I've been doing, to be uh, very, very important, uh, especially with cancer in preventing and even in uh, lengthening your life, even if you are dealing with the cancer. So put the sesame seeds on, mixed in. Usually I would put a half a cup of uh, dry roasted sesame seeds into, into the um, rice. And I always, what I'll do is I'll just, all my seeds, which maybe I can do a seed Ooh. video, um, I will pre prepare them ahead of time and put them in glass jars in the fridge. Um, please store your seeds in the fridge so they don't go rancid. Okay? Um, I love the sesame seeds. How you can tell is um, at first they're, you, you, can, you can't squash them between your fingers. They're just hard seeds. And as they cook, they should split open when you just press them between your fingers. Of course, standing here, I'm getting that good smell from the cooking. Uh, so sesame seeds, I always have them ready to go. And uh, now people wonder about, you know, if you don't have dairy, where are you getting your, your calcium? Oh, well, the sea vegetables have tons of calcium. Uh, sesame seeds have tons of calcium. I will also use um, tahini, which is made of sesame seeds. I'll get um, a, a raw tahini. The only ingredient is unhulled sesame seeds. When I buy them, I buy unhulled, organic again, sesame seeds. I buy most of my stuff in bulk. Uh, it's rare that I go on the inner aisles of any store. Usually when you shop the outer aisles, you're you're doing uh, a good shop. <laughs> so uh, Breeze food has always never been packaged, never been, it's all, never been canned. She's never had a canned food in her life. Everything has been bulk items, fresh vegetables, fruits, uh, nuts and seeds, uh, beans. I cook my beans from scratch too. So now, just waiting for this to... Oh, and I'm starting to hear it pop a bit. And I will adjust my temperature accordingly. You don't walk away from this because they could burn too easily. You keep, keep stirring it gently and it doesn't take long at all. Oh, it sounds so nice. It's now... It's now uh, starting to pop. The more I have cooked food from scratch, the more I enjoy it. And the more appreciation I had. You know, I, was, I had no, when my, when my daughter was born, this why, is why I say my daughter is my inspiration. I didn't know 
the, the nutrient value of foods. I didn't know that foods were healing, but uh, Hippocrates the, says, let food be thy medicine. I didn't know anything about that. And, uh, you know, within two years of Brie being on a plant-based diet, her grand mal seizures stopped. That got my attention because they were never supposed to stop. And uh, I did this because I was desperate. But am I glad I was desperate? Yes. Because I, I, I don't think I would have done this. And it's, uh, it's the foundation for both of us in everything we do. Oh, this is getting so close. It is popping. It is lovely you now. So yes, I talk about food like they're my friends. I guess, good, my good friends. And they are, they are. It has, um, I know without a doubt, if I didn't have good nutrition, uh, I would be on, on uh, pharmaceutical drugs. And that is not, with all the side effects involved, uh, I'd rather do this any day. And Brie too, she would have had the side effects of major seizure drugs, which long term, really take a toll on the liver and uh, all, all kinds of different things. And she's more present, she's more aware because she's not on the medications that sort of make you look sleepy all the time. Oh, these are nice. This is perfect. And I can take them now and I can easily, between my fingers, they just, um, they just uh, fall apart. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Love it. Okay, so I turn that off, and, uh, oops, put them in a bowl. Nice. There we go. Perfect. All right, so this one dish, which I just did with the Napa cabbage, the purple top turnip, and the rice, uh, this is steamed... Uh, red char. Steam greens every day, mix them up. So we have uh, the red char and we have the rice with the purple top turnips and the Napa cabbage or Chinese cabbage. And this is a beautiful breakfast, it's a macrobiotic breakfast. Uh, miso soup on the side, but uh, I'll do that at another time. The toasted sesame seeds are perfect. Garnish with the toasted sesame seeds and we're ready to go. So, there we go. And now, I'm going to, with the rest of this rice, make a quick fried rice. I'm using toasted sesame oil, which is, also there's gonna be the selenium in that and the calcium in that, but it's, um, it's just a wonderful smell when you're cooking. I remember when I studied <clears throat> at the Cushy Institute, and it was getting, we were in lectures, and it was getting close to lunchtime, Whenever they were doing noodles, you could smell the, te the toasted sesame oil coming from the kitchen. It was, just, it was just a wonderful, wonderful smell. So um, now I am going to uh, saute a couple of vegetables in the toasted sesame oil. But if oils, you're concerned about oil, you can water saute. You can put a little bit of water in the bottom and saute. So uh, whatever is the best that works for you. Um, I would water saute for my child. And uh, when I do use now, it's so many years later that we do use oil, uh, but always uh, small amounts. Uh, small amounts would be, I would do about a teaspoon in a, in a good sized pot of fried rice. So the first thing I'm gonna put in, this is gonna start smelling so good, are diced up onions. Diced up onions, get that going, and I need my salt, or I use a wheat-free tamari. Now remember, you can order all these things if you can. I'm really specific about the quality of the tamari. I will not buy, there's some out there that I, I this is Motoku, I will buy Osawa, uh, Eden, those are three good ones. Um, and not always easy to find. They have the really not so good quality ones out there. But you can order these from the Osawa one from uh, uh, Goldmine, Natural Foods, or the Kushi. I got this from Kushi. 
And now I will saute these onions. So diced up onions, pretty basic. Mmm, yes, nice. And I'm going to add something called, this is called burdock root. Very, very strengthening. Uh, the round vegetables, this part of the body, the long vegetables, parsnips, carrots, burdock, for the lower part of the body, and then the greens for this upper part of the body. So um, you can wash this off with a vegetable brush, or if it just won't come off, <laughs> this, this, to dig this out, this is very strengthening. To just to dig this out of the ground takes a lot of effort. Okay, keep an eye on this. So, and I'm going to put, this is what the bird up looks like, matchstick, okay? And what I want to tell you is you can wash it off, or if it's uh, easier for you, you can take this, a vegetable slicer and just take off the, the, um, the, the rough, rough skin. Okay, um, so that's burdock root, and if you can't find burdock root, use parsnips. Um, and I'm going to put in some matchstick carrots and some celery. There we go. I love these plates. They, these uh, are from my mom, so every time I use them, I remember my mom. I only have a couple of them, but that's all you need. Every every time. My mom goes through my head when I use those plates. All right. So I'll saute that up. And, uh, oh, smelling so good. Now, to match stick, this is just a baby carrot, but to match stick, you slice it at an angle, like that, okay? Off you go. And then you take these pieces, fill the little little ball here, and then slice through like this, and that makes you your matchsticks, okay? There. That's how you match it. Oh, this is so nice. Now, I will add some salt, but you could also use some tamari. Nice. You know, with salt, uh, for the little kids, Use very little pinches for uh, women and children, a little bit more. And then for the men, the men tend to want more salt. <laughs> Always sea salt. This is so nice. Oh, yum. So I cook just about every day. <laughs> And have been for years. Um, unless I was at a macrobiotic summer camp conference, no one else has ever cooked for my daughter. There's a couple of people that uh, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> very, very good macrobiotic cooks, I know. Oh my god, that would be such a gift. So, there we go. And I have this other rice ready to go. Now, something I didn't mention. Say this was mixed with sesame seeds. Seeds and grain make complete protein. Uh, the one grain that is complete protein is quinoa. But you mix a nut with a grain, a seed with a grain, whichever grain, and it makes complete protein. So you don't have to worry. And, I mean, there, there shouldn't be that worry. I think it was just a, a hype from the animal products people because uh, 30 years later, we're good. And the stress of uh, the stress of raising a profoundly handicapped child is considered the highest stress you can have. And I've been doing this for almost 35 years. So now I'm going to put the rice just here in on top. This is the rest of the rice we had in the pot. So, organic, short grain, brown rice. Uh, if your condition is good, then, uh, you know, in summertime, basmati, long grain rice. I, there's some 
two good companies, Long Pine, uh, that makes a wonderful rice, and Lundberg, uh, both out of California. And um, I tend to use more Lundberg, but I, it's just, you know, just me. <laughs> both are nice. And always wash your hands before you start cooking. I just take that as a normal part of what happens. All right. So, take this, soak it, and we're good to go. And I have right here, let me just, what you can do is just for a minute, put a little bit of water there. Yes, you can, you can hear it bubbling up. There we go. Just for a minute. Turn it down. And what I have here on this plate are collard greens. Collard greens. Where is the Oh, look at this beauty. That's a collard green. Isn't that beautiful? These are all good for your lungs, your upper area of your body. I have lacinata kale. Here's lacinata kale. Um, here's the red chard that I used in the other plate. That's just a couple of the greens. Mix them up every day. Uh, Bree's consultation, her first consultation was to have steamed leafy greens every day. So, um, and to cut something like this, you just roll it up like a collared cigar <laughs> and just slice through it. Easy as that. And then steam it for three minutes in a steamer. And uh, I love them. They're actually my favorite, but I mix it all, all up. All right, so that's the collard greens. And this should be good. I also, as you see, I used uh, wood, a lot of wood. I want to keep the metallic out. Another thing I didn't mention to clean up, I used regular white vinegar. It is, it'll kill anything. And, um, and you're not using uh, toxic chemicals and uh, all these commercial cleaners and things that have all kinds of stuff in them. Um, so I do that in, for the whole household. If I put anything in it, it's, um, it's a dish soap that has no, no, no sense in it. It's just clear, simple. Um, I'm, yes, I have been, I admit it, very particular about my daughter. Um, and, and I, you know, I'm successful. Bree is, was a profoundly handicapped, uh, you know, little girl. I mean, she was getting sick all the time. I was in the hospitals, emergency rooms. I slept in intensive care with her. Um, I've ridden in ambulances with uh, Bree uh, re in respiratory distress. Uh, scared the daylights out of me. <laughs> um, you know, and I'm sitting in an ambulance and they're telling me she's not breathing. So, um, this is easy compared to living like that. But that was the first, before I started macrobiotics, the first four and a half years of my life. And then she got stronger, stronger, and stronger. And the two years of macrobiotics, the first two years, she still had the grand mal seizures about seven, at least seven a year, four hours duration, but she recovered faster. She it would take her a week to get back to normal before macrobiotics. And the next day, she was ready to do her program, ready to do her stimulation program. So uh, for me, this nutrition is so, it's, it's our, like I keep saying, it's our foundation. So now I put the fried rice on the plate. And uh, I gre uh, blend her everything up for my daughter. So yes, it looks like this, but... I have to blend it up for her. And then you have, you can put some parsley, sprinkle some parsley on top. You can have scallion, slice scallion on top. You can do the nori again. Uh, another wonderful thing to put on just raw, and you can just dice it up and put on raw, it's uh, arugula. It's also anti-cancer. Anti, anti um, you know, when it comes to, so here we've got two, Two plates to go, and I have my supper, <laughs> and Brie has her supper. Um, I store in glass, 
okay, uh, glass or stainless steel containers. Uh, <clears throat> I usually buy when the rice is on sale, I buy a 25 pound bag. I bring it home, I put it in a plastic bucket with uh, the whole bag with a good tight seal cap on it. And you've got food that's going to last you a long time. So this is what's nice about this type of food is it just lasts. The beans, the grains, the seaweed, they're dried. There is, they just last. So um, if it's a matter of survival, these are great foods to know how to cook. I mean, it's pointless to have rice and not know how to cook it. So um, I also will mix rice with, say it's a two cups of rice to two cups of water. Uh, what I might do is do one and a half of brown rice and add a half cup of teff. Or I will add a half cup of amaranth. And these are both high protein. Uh, amaranth is, always comes up even in famine situations. So this is a hearty, it's really a seed, but this is hearty. Um, also, I will sprinkle this with gamasio since I'm eating this. Usually I make breeze gamasio from scratch. This is sesame seeds. This is a member body condiment you can leave on the table. It's a com combination of sesame seeds and sea salt. Usually 14 to 1, which means 14 sesame seeds, one part sea salt. Um, maybe I'll show you how to make that from scratch, because Brie would have about 20 to 1, which would mean 20 sesame seeds, less salty. But you sprinkle that on there, and so you've got your sesame seeds with the selenium in it, uh, copper in it, uh, magnesium in it, all kinds of great, great minerals. And um, I want to make sure I've covered everything for this basic. And uh, the last thing I want to cover is so many times people will say to me, well, you know, my child has this particular thing and your child is different, it's not the same. So my child's constipation is different from your child's constipation. And I go, in my mind, I go, no, we are more or less 50 trillion cells, you know? And this is like a skin-colored Petri dish, and the medium is our blood. And how you build healthy blood is through the nutrition you eat, you know? How you build healthy cells. Because, you know, the body has a phenomenal ability to heal itself. But if you mask it with a medication, it's not healing itself. You're just masking the situation. And I had to do that until Brie got healthy enough on her own. But, you know, the three things it takes to build a cell is the food you eat, the air you breathe, and the liquid you drink. So having really good nutrition builds healthy cells. And when you have healthy cells, you're not going to be sick. And also, these, these foods, these greens, these vegetables are alkaline. A healthy body is more alkaline. A diseased body is more acid. All animal foods are very, very acid. So, uh, and I believe I've covered everything, hopefully. And now, the, the whole reason, the whole reason, come on up here, my girl. The whole reason that all this is happening is because of my daughter. And do uh, you want to give me five on this? How'd I do? Because you sure checked me out, didn't you? I heard you in the background. So Bree's alive and healthy and happy. That, to me, is miraculous. Because she wasn't supposed to live beyond five. She rarely gets a cold. Maybe once a year, maybe not. Um, and, uh, and I'm happy she's still with me. You gonna give me five? Let's see. Hey, you gonna give mama five? Let's go. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Good girl. Sweet pea. Yeah. Huh. All right, we're good. Huh.